G'day guys and welcome to this business management lesson. In today's lesson we're looking at Key Knowledge Point 312. That is Unit 3, Area of Study 1 and the second Key Knowledge Point for this area of study. Today specifically we're looking at business objectives and once again this Key Knowledge Point includes a helpful list of the different business objectives that you're going to need to know. Those are to make a profit, to increase market share, to improve efficiency, to improve effectiveness, to fulfill a market need, to fulfill a social need, and to meet shareholder expectations. Let's get started. Business objectives describe whatever it is that a business expects to accomplish over a set period of time. These are very, very useful to businesses as a whole uh, and to individual managers and employees because it provides a business with direction. If your business objectives are well set, and communicated, your employees know what it is that they're working towards. They know how their performance as a team or as individuals will be determined to be successful or not. And certainly by that metric, objectives help measure success. If your team is doing well, you'll see that objectives are met. If your team is doing poorly, you'll see that objectives remain un unfulfilled, uncompleted. Uh, and that is one way that um, objectives can help you determine the health of your business. It's one of the rationale or one of the reasons that we like to see businesses setting effective objectives. Now, just one side note here about the language of the study design. In Unit 3 for Business Management, goals are personal. Goal setting is for individuals. And you'll discuss that more in uh, Area of Study 2 of Unit 3. But for now and throughout the rest of the study design, objectives apply to business goals. So if you're talking about things that are business-wide, we're talking about objectives. If you're talking about individual goals, their goals. Try not to mix up that language. It's pretty clear in the study design, and so you'd want to try and keep it clear in your responses as well. Now, some examples of business objectives, the ones that are listed in the study design, include to make a profit. This is a financial metric. Uh, revenue is the money that your business makes, it's the income of your business, and expenses are the costs. So anytime your business makes a dollar, that's revenue. Anytime your business spends a dollar, that's an expense. If you deduct the expenses from the revenue, the formula revenue minus expenses, you'll get a result. If that result is positive, you've made a profit. If that result is negative, you've made a loss. And ultimately, that's the foundations of accounting. If you're in accounting, try and remember that and you'll be all right. Other business objectives listed in this key knowledge point include to increase market share. Market share can be defined as the portion of a market controlled by a particular company or product. And you can see in this pie chart, the representation of which business is selling the most groceries, or at least which business sold the most groceries to Australians in 2021. You can see that Woolworths Group sold the majority of groceries, Coles Group weren't far behind, and then Aldi, IGA, and miscellaneous other um, account for basically the remaining third. This is a representation of the market share of the Australian grocery market, the portion of sales that is controlled by a particular company. You could look more specifically at the market share of Apple sales within the grocery market, or you could look more broadly at the market share of sales total of Australian businesses. You could narrow this down to just in uh, in Victoria or in a suburb like Maribyrnong. You could um, look at this for a particular type of product or a particular group of products. Whichever way you decide to break it down, you can evaluate the market share by looking at which business sells the most or how much a business sells of a particular product within particular contexts. Now, increasing market share is the business objective. So whatever you can do to make your products or your business more competitive. And certainly throughout our studies in year 12 business management, we'll discuss many different strategies that can be employed to increase competitive advantage. But knowing that one business objective that most, if not all businesses will share is to increase their market share. That's the point of today's lesson. Certainly another objective is to fulfill a market need. And you should have learned about this in year 11 business management, but if not, We'll talk about it right now. If you can identify a product or service that's not currently available, but if it was made available, people would buy it, then you've identified a gap in the market. If you're 
sitting at school right now thinking I'd really like to buy an ice cream after school and there's not anywhere around your school to buy an ice cream, uh, then you've identified a gap in the market. Because if you're thinking like that, odds are other people are thinking like that and you'd have, you're probably going to have pretty good luck if you manage to set up a little business across the road from school selling ice creams at 3 o'clock or 3.30 when people start streaming out of the gates. If you're selling ice creams, you can expect people would buy them. That would be identifying a gap in the market and seeking to fulfill that market need or seeking to fill that uh, gap in the market is a business objective. No business wants to bring products or services to market that aren't going to sell. No business is seeking to introduce products to market that nobody wants to buy. It's definitely a business objective to fulfill a market need, to introduce products to market, to make things available that people want to buy. Now, the two improvement objectives, to improve efficiency and to improve effectiveness. This is just basically talking about every business wants to be more efficient and more effective. Efficiency is how you use your materials or your inputs. If it takes you 700 kilograms of timber, of wood, to make a single chair, your business is wildly inefficient. If Nike used an entire cow's worth of leather to make one pair of shoes, that would be wildly inefficient. Using less resources to produce your outputs is efficiency. And trying to use fewer and fewer resources to produce the same number of outputs is seeking to improve efficiency. Certainly, your business has to buy its resources. You have to buy your inputs. So uh, improving your efficiency is going to help save you money. So that's one of the reasons that businesses seek to improve their efficiency, um, not, not even considering the environmental impact that uh, using excess inventory or excess inputs um, accounts for. So seeking to improve efficiency is a pretty common business objective. And certainly effectiveness. We define effectiveness as the degree to which a business can achieve its objectives. So in this context, an effective business is well positioned to achieve each of the objectives we're talking about now. A business is effective if they can consistently make a profit and implement strategies to increase their market share. A business we would say is not very effective if it has a hard time meeting these objectives at all. So your business is likely to seek to improve its effectiveness because if it can get more efficient at increasing its market share or more efficiently make a profit, that's going to be better for your business on every metric. Certainly a highly efficient business with skilled and engaged and motivated staff will be better positioned to achieve its objectives. Engaged and motivated staff are more productive and efficient, and you would see that when you're measuring objective achievement. We have fulfilling a social need. Providing goods or services that improve the quality of life for individuals within a community or for a community as a whole is how we define a social need. And so certainly many businesses, if not all, will have the objective to fulfill a social need through things like um, providing community service leave to their employees, building infrastructure that's to the benefit of businesses within the community or the community as a whole, um, providing employment to typically uh, groups that typically have challenge or face challenges, gaining uh, meaningful employment, um, for pursuing social justice clauses, um, whatever that may include. It's there are a number that have been prescient over the past few years, from the Black Lives Movement, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, to the um, to the Me Too movement. And if your business is pursuing change in areas such as those, you you could classify that as fulfilling a social need, and certainly pursuing ecological sustainability, uh, reducing your business's impact or negative impacts on the environment, or even trying to introduce positive changes for environmental sustainability. Uh, and then certainly meeting shareholders' expectations. If your business is an incorporated business, if your business is a company, you're owned by shareholders. If it's a private limited company or a public listed company, those investors, those shareholders are going to have expectations of your business. They want the value of their investment to increase. They want to be paid valuable dividends. Um, certainly, if they've invested in a social enterprise, they want to see the business fulfill its social needs as a priority. So whatever it is that your investors 
are expecting of your business, making sure you've met those expectations is pretty important. We've talked about a number of objectives in this lesson. It's important to consider that a lot of them are financial objectives. Make a profit, increase market share, fulfill a market need and meeting shareholders' expectations are all typically financial objectives. They're all to do with your money and how you're making money, how much money you're making, how you're spending your money, where you allocate those funds. Whereas a social objective is sort of distinct and removed from those based on the fact that we would measure the success of the fulfillment of a social need by the impacts of the social program that you're uh, initiating or um, delivering. Whereas the other objectives tend to be measured in terms of the financial um, impact or the financial allocations that it achieves. Um, many different business types that you'll talk about this year will prioritize their social objectives. Social enterprises prioritize their social objectives. But it's important to remember that every business can have both financial and social objectives. In summary for this key knowledge point, all businesses have objectives. Whether or not they've sat down to think about what their objectives are, all businesses have objectives. Every business seeks to make a profit. Every business seeks to fulfill a market need. No business seeks to run at a loss, and certainly no business is trying to bring products to market that no one wants to buy. So, whether or not they've thought about it, every business seeks to fulfill objectives. Different types of businesses will have different types of objectives. And as we just discussed, social objectives and financial objectives will be allocated different priority based on the type of business. Certainly amongst the financial objectives, different financial objectives will have different levels of priority based on your business and the context of your business. Um, but all businesses have objectives. That's just a universal truth. Fulfilling objectives gives meaning to everything a business does is a simple way of saying that if you're not setting objectives, if you're not monitoring objectives, and if you're not achieving objectives, you're probably not running a business. It's pretty true of every business that they're hoping to make a profit and they're implementing strategies to try and achieve that objective of making a profit. And you can extrapolate that out to the other objectives we've discussed as necessary. That's all for today. See you next time.